Hey guys, it's Patrick Baptiste with Block Band again. I'm sitting here with Dr. Nicole Roebuck. She is the head of the music department and the director of bands at the Grambling State University. She's a native of Minden, Louisiana, and she's naturally a clarinet player, although she does have all of the band to work with. Uh, I'm so glad that she's taking some time out of her busy schedule to discuss with us. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. Nicole Roebuck. Ooh. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you, Dr. Robach. I know you're busy. I know you're taking some time out of your travel schedule for us. Uh, I just want to yank on your ear and pick your brain for a bit. Is that okay? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, all right. So we'll we'll get started with it. Um, a question that I get all the time is what inspired you to be a band director? I know normally that when I answer that question, I have kind of a who, a what, and a why. Mm -hmm. You know, so can you just kind of take us through that, that uh, journey uh, of your decision to become a band director? The person that inspired me to be a band director is my Uncle Joe. He was <laughs> assistant director of bands at Grandma State University uh, back in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. And as a little girl, I spent uh, a number of summers with him at high school band camp. My, you know, <laughs> my mom would send me to twirl the baton. And I remember this one summer, I, I was sitting on the curb and I guess somebody went to go get my uncle. He comes out. And he called me Scooty Poo. He said, Scooty Poo, what's wrong? And I said, I don't want to twirl a baton. He said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I, I want a horn. And he mm. said, well, you're not, <laughs> you're not old enough just yet. But when you're old enough, you know, I'll make sure that you get your first uh, band instrument. And he did. He said, but until then, I want you to sit at the bottom of this ladder and make sure that uh, Uncle Joe does not fall off. And I didn't realize at that time that the magnitude of that little girl sitting at the bottom of the ladder would one day uh, be on top of the ladder and direct the world fame. Wow, that's uh, that's something. Whoa, almost every <laughs> single summer just, oh man, I can't imagine the, 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 the great of musicians that you had, that you had the, the experience of, of seeing and, 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 you know, at, at this point working with, that's gotta be, uh, that's gotta be something awesome to look back on and kind of once again, see that journey uh to getting there and so it's kind of speaking about that journey um have you worked with other grade levels have you worked on the elementary the high school level uh, and if so uh what are some of the things what are kind of those main points that you've taken from those teaching experience into the uh into the position that you hold now well when i left grandma state university i went to cattle parish and i was a middle school band director mm -hmm. um taught in cattle parish several years i was asked actually an itinerant band director where you, you know, teach half a day at one school, <laughs> yeah. other half a day at the other yeah. school. And, uh, and I got, got an experience of, of, I guess, both sides of, of the coin. And one school was um, in, you know, one side of the, the town and, mm -hmm. and the yep. other school was in the other side of the town and, and got a chance to really um, learn a lot about, um, how to teach different, uh, not just different levels, but uh, different students from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, after leaving Cattle Parish, because I, my goal was to really be at, at one school all day. Um, and when you split yourself like that, it, it's kind of like you're burning um, the, the candle at both yes, ends. So I wanted is. to focus in on, on one, one school. So when I left Cattle Parish, I actually got a call from the principal at Arcadia High School. And he was looking for a band director. I saw my picture in the paper with my husband. We had just gotten married. And he reached out to a couple of people in the Ruston area and, and got my number. He called me. I never, I'll never forget I went in. And I, his name was Ray Bratton. They hadn't had a band program in six years at Arcadia. So when I go in to interview, he said, well, you know, do you want to see the band room? And I said, sure. So he takes me down to this band room that they had been using as a storage room. And in my mind, I'm like, I, I just don't know. I said, well, give me some time to think about it. And I actually went about two weeks and he kept calling. And I said, well, Mr. Brad, I really hadn't made my decision. I, I just don't know. And I was looking for uh, what we call an ideal situation. Band program already set up, instruments, uh, the band room, all, all, all with the bells and whistles. And I remember my husband telling me, you say you want to be a band director, right? I said, yes. He said, here's your chance. If you jump and you succeed, then you know what you're made of. But if you jump and you don't succeed, then you know you need, need to 
kind of shift, um, the, you know, the, the point of your career and do something different. So I was so glad that I took that leap of faith, went into Arcadia High School, uh, was able to build a program. Uh, I actually taught fifth through 12th grade when I was there. It was my own wow. feeder. Um, got a chance to learn how to, you know, purchase instruments. So I tell my music educators now, you have to learn how to purchase instruments, put things out on bid, design uniforms. Uh, and I'll insert this. That same uniform I designed, which lets me know the quality of work uh, from that company. My son is in the band at that same high school now. And I'll never forget several years ago, they were fitting for uniforms. And uh, I just had a, a, a surreal moment just to see him in that uniform where uh, I designed it. And at the time I was pregnant with him. And now he's, he's wearing the uniform at that same high school. So those were some of my experiences. I uh, was able to you know, get that group up and going. I, I tell everybody, when you start from the ground level and you learn how to construct a program, it teaches you, teaches you a lot about yourself as, a, as an educator. Uh, you learn from your, your triumphs, you learn from your failures. Um, and in the end, made me a better uh, music educator. We were able to go to different large ensemble festivals. We went to Texas, we went to Georgia. Um, yeah, you know, that was, those were my experiences, and I'll never, ever forget that group that I had at Arcadia High School. Uh, they they made me and molded me into uh, the, the educator, um, the beginning of the educator that I, that I am uh, today, so I owe a lot to that group. Wow, and I can definitely understand, uh, you know, especially when you start them off so young. And you're with them for so much time you definitely have that connection and, and it's to see them go forward mm -hmm. uh and grow as as not only as musicians but as as just as people as humans right. you know and i'll have to say this a, a lot of those students when they left arcadia mm -hmm. um they came to to gremlin and marched in the band under me at gremlin as an assistant so it was just like a um you know reliving it all <laughs> over again and, and to watch them come to gremlin march in the band graduate and now be successful in, in their lives. It's, it's, man, it's awesome. I tell people uh, there's some things in life that money can't buy. And to see a student um, grow and to know that you had a hand in making them the person that they are, I mean, money can't buy that. Hmm. I agree with you on that. I definitely agree with you. Speaking of those, uh, those students, uh, um, I have to point this out. You're, you're a band director. You're a, a collegiate band director. Um, and, and you, you work in a, in a, a male dominated field. Um, what would, what advice would you give to those, those young lady musicians who are considering a career as a, as a band director or, or, or a music educator? I get that question a lot about, you know, being a, a female band director and, and I always answer it the same way. Uh, I'm a band director first mm -hmm. and I just happen to be a female. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a leader is a leader, whether you male or female. And with any person that's in this field, the best piece of advice that I could give would just be competent and confident. That's the best piece of advice I could give. Short and sweet. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, well, you kind you kind of hit my my next question. I wanted to ask, uh, you know, what would you just give to to band directors, those younger band directors? I know I'm not so young. Uh, but, you know, me included, those band directors on a high school, on the middle school level that are, that are tasked with creating that next generations of musicians that you'll, uh, you'll receive, what advice would you give them? Well, advice I would give to them, um, when, I, when I teach my music educators uh, now, I teach a class, Foundations of Music Education. And so we, we do a lot of dialogue in that class about, you know, how to be the, the best music educator that you can possibly be. Mm -hmm. And I tell my students often, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to get help. A lot of times as a beginning band director, we go in that classroom and we close the door and we think we can do it all, but nobody gets there alone. You know, nobody gets to the, the, the top of uh, the pinnacle of what you want your program to sound like or look like. You, you don't get there alone. Mm -hmm. And so you have to reach out to individuals who have that wisdom and that knowledge. And, and I just remember as a beginning band director, reaching out to, you know, band directors who, who taught me, who influenced me, um, things that I was stuck on. And it doesn't make you less than. 
it makes you more than because you are big enough to say, I don't quite understand this. Let me get some help. And so once you get that help, then that's something, you know, I say you put in that in your bag of tricks and, and now you have it. You know how to pull it out when you need it. But don't ever go in the classroom and feel like you have to, uh, you know, and for lack of a better term, suffer in silence. Because if you don't know and you can't fix that trumpet player because you were a clarinet player, uh, when you first start off, learn how to do it. Get somebody in and you watch them do it. And, and after that, um, you know, it, it, mm-hmm. it becomes easier for you. So get help if you don't know. And it's OK if you don't know. And that just makes you better. Uh, and you can progress in, in your career and and put all of those things into your bag of tricks. And like I say, pull them out when you need them. Yes, ma'am. Will do. <laughs> uh, I've just got one more for you. I, I know you're busy. I know you're, you're headed to to, uh, to a performance uh, as we speak. Um, I've got one more for you. Um, you know, once again, I mean, you you like you said, you kind of sit at the pinnacle of 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 a of a, of a band program, a, a collegiate band. Um, how do you, as a director, keep your, your competitive edge, uh, as you lead your program? To keep my competitive edge, uh, there, there are several things that I do. <laughs> um, uh, I would say you always assess at the end of the season where you are, mm-hmm. you know, the good, the bad, <laughs> the, the not, you know, I hate to say the ugly, mm-hmm. but the not so good. Um, and that makes you better for the for the next year because every season brings about a a different set of um challenges you know you have a different group of kids um and so you you approach each season um depending on the group that you have uh people oftentimes they say well you know hey i want to you know you guys played this last year can you play it again and i am a um a, a strong proponent of I had this group last year they may not if they can articulate it better than yes I'll pull it out but if they can't articulate it like it was the past season mm-hmm. then no it's no need of us playing it mm-hmm. and each group is different and as you talk to different directors they'll tell you that like that was last season this is something new now but to compete to keep my competitive edge um you just have to have tunnel vision you have to stay focused um And you have to make sure that when things come, you know, where it's positive comments, you take them, uh, but you don't live there. You know, they always say um, the the, the, the rich people, you know, they don't they don't sleep. So if you're going to be the best band director that you can be, uh, sometimes you have to go with a lack of sleep because you're always uh, fine tuning your program and how it could be better. And so my thing is. I get with my team. I don't ever say it's all about me because it's not. I have an excellent team of directors. I call them the power team that, um, you know, we're all here. We've all had programs. Everybody has a creative side. So we come together. We bring our creative juices together and we say, hey, how can we make the world fame better than it was last season? Um, So, you know, that's just what I do. You you involve your team. You keep them involved. tunnel vision and stay in focus and that's how I keep my competitive edge. All right. Words spoken from a <laughs> from a from a professional, from a master uh, of our craft. Uh, thank you so much. Dr. Roebuck, for once again, just taking some time out of your busy schedule. I hope I didn't hold you up with anything. Um, I definitely I want to talk some more. I want to talk some more. And I know your time is limited. Uh, so we'll definitely uh, set, hopefully set a date for that. Uh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to what we've got going on. Um, heck, I just, I just have to edify you one more time. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nicole. Woo, thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Thank you so much.